Good afternoon. Um, welcome to everybody. And um, we're going to go back into open session. And Susan, do you need to have a roll call before yes. we begin? All right. Okay, Trustee Dyinger. Yes. Trustee Ciccone. Yes. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Dolce. Yes. Trustee Ellis. Yes. Trustee Jacobson. Yes. Trustee Valentin. Yes. Trustee Worthington. Yes. Trustee Ajikame. Yes. Trustee Davis. Yes. President Kesselman. Here. Okay, thank you. And do we need to approve the minutes? No, already because we did that already. Already yeah. done. Okay, so we're right, right on to number four, the chairperson's report. So, so nice to see you all, as always, at this, um, we're getting to be very festive time of year. Um, as I was walking down the hallway here, I, I saw a ghost in front of me. Um, a very enthusiastic, walking very fast ghost, Stockton supporter of many years. Um, it was from behind, so I didn't get to see his smile. I also didn't get a chance to have him give me a book because he was always carrying a book or giving me a book for my son, um, a vocabulary book about maybe seven years before my son even heard of the SATs. Um, I'm, of course, talking about Alan R. Curie, who um, I know is still here walking very quickly down the halls, and his office door is always open. And it was very heartening, some of the lovely Things that were written about Alan were passed along to me, and I got to read them. Um, and some of them were shared with my fellow trustees. So I just wanted to bring that up and greet you all. And let's dive right into our meeting and start with the president's report. Thank you. I'd like to, on the night that I heard about Alan, I jotted some things down. I just want to share them with you. Um, I always remember the many nights in the Sea Wing pub <laughs> discussing politics and life. The lectures and advice that stay with us to this day. The summer morning calisthenics and Lake Fred runs. The G-wing meals where laughter filled the air. The I-wing registrations where he always found one more blue card. The times he arrived early and stayed late for students in distress. The love he had for his pals, colleagues like Bill, Cindy, and Jan the passion that he had for first-generation and at-risk students, the humbleness and kindness he always displayed. I will always remember Alan, and thanks for choosing Stockton to be your home. We are all better people for having known you, so can we have a moment of silence? Thank you, and thank you, Alan. Today is a grand day. We're going to have an opportunity to do a number of celebratory acts, one of which is to present to the Board of Trustees a resolution naming the event room of the new Atlantic City Academic Building as the Fannie Lou Hamer event room. Pat Reed Merritt, and I know I saw her coming in, and Joe Walsh, brought the idea to the community on August 29th and I believe they are in the audience today. I know they are and want to thank them for this wonderful idea. Stock <laughs> Stockton has played an active role in uplifting the Fannie Lou Hamer legacy and is known around the state, region, and country for working towards this goal. In the fall of 2004, the Africana Studies Program was contacted by the New Jersey State Historical Commission to host a special event to commemorate then the 40th anniversary of Hamer's speech at the 1964 Democratic National Convention, which was held at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. Since 2004, Stockton has hosted the annual Fannie Lou Hamer Human and Civil Rights Symposia. They have proven, as you all know, to be incredibly powerful events and moving events. October 2017, just last month, marked the 100th year anniversary of Mrs. Hamer's birth. She made history on the boardwalk, as I said before, and as the new Stockton campus community continues to rise, there could be no greater public honor than to recognize her contribution to the march toward freedom and social justice 
than naming the new event room, a place where students, faculty, staff, and community will come to learn, reflect, and listen to the voices of reason in her honor. I can say unequivocally that if it had not been for Pratt Reed Murray and her incredible work in support of the Fannie Lou Hamer Symposia each and every year, okay, this would not be a reality at Stockton. So Pat, Joe, on behalf, please stand first and be recognized. Pat, there you are, way in the back here, okay? And Joe. So this resolution is for you, for Stockton, and for all the entire community. So I am requesting a motion to approve the resolution that stands before the Board of Trustees. So moved. Second. Trustee Dininger. Yes. Trustee Ciccone. Yes. <laughs> Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Dolce. Yes. Trustee Ellis. Yes. Trustee Jacobson. Yes. Trustee Valentin. Yes. Trustee Worthington. Yes. Trustee Ajigame. Yes. And I wish I could vote for this one. <laughs> Kudos to this. Very good. The next item, you know, one of the, the easiest things for a university president to do is to be able to speak about both the philosophy of an institution as well as the reality of the institution. And one of the things that I always pride myself when, I, when I'm in the position and I can be able to say to folks anywhere that our institution is deeply committed to the concept of civic learning and community engagement. This past year, and I love to brag about that, no matter where I'm at, and when there's many, many other institutions that are engaged in that, in that work. This past year, as all of you know, the American Association of State Colleges and Universities had for its, the first time an inaugural award in what we do best, civic learning and community engagement. And after they reviewed the dozens and dozens of proposals from the more than 400 institutions that are eligible to apply for the award, they selected one institution to represent as the inaugural winner that award, and it was Stockton University. I was asked on behalf of ASCU to uh, receive the award in San Diego, and this particular um, film was presented that night. So, Scott, you told me to point at you when it was your time. I'm pointing at you. Stockton University's American Democracy Project is made up of students, staff, faculty, and administrators from across the university, dedicated to ensuring that we are going to be conscious of what efforts we're making in our community when it comes to political engagement, civic engagement, and even larger perspectives of global engagement. Some of the factors that have really been able to emphasize the success of the American Democracy Project here at Stockton has been the resources that have gone into civic engagement and community engagement projects. Some of the biggest achievements that have come from the project have been our consistency with our annual Constitution Day speaker. Everything from Anita Hill, Brian Stevenson, to Nina Totenberg. Everything from our local elections to our general election work, from ensuring that we're registering our students to getting them to the ballots. Give, the, give Daniel a round of applause, but I'd also like to... I'm going to ask, this entire audience, in some way, shape, or form, has been involved in us being engaged in civic learning and community engagement. It's something that we do. It's something that we pride ourselves, and it's something that we do each and every day. But there are two individuals that I will ask to come up here to receive this award that I received on your behalf, not on my behalf, okay? Uh, it, and that's Dr. Willa Colon and Daniel Tomei, and I'd have to shout out Michelle McDonald for putting forth, helping the proposal to make this happen. Please come here so you can receive the award.
to fight over in which area it goes, but it's just something we take care of. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. That's incredible. That's incredible. Did you have to bring that back from San Diego? No, I did not. That's an amazing sculpture. It was that probably didn't go on carry-on baggage from San Diego. What, Michelle? Yeah. Oh, uh, you don't want to know that story. <laughs> no, great. But what an honor for the university. Uh, I'd, I'd also like to, we haven't done this before, uh, and, I, and we have done it with teams but not individuals. Um, Kevin McHugh, our new executive director of athletics and recreation, and I had discussed the possibility because we've had some really extraordinary things happen with some of our athletes, uh, and I wanted to showcase them for the entire Stockton community. So I'm going to ask Kevin McHugh to come up here and provide a little background of two um, women over there who deserve a heck of a lot of praise for representing Stockton so well. Thank you, Dr. Kesselman, Madam Chair, members of the board and Stockton community. Uh, the Ospreys had a, a really successful fall sports season that included the women's volleyball team finishing 23 and 11 after a really uh, tough loss in the New Jersey Athletic Conference Championship Final, and the women's cross country team taking second at the New Jersey Athletic Conference Championship, and then 12th out of 41 teams at the NCAA Regional Championship. Thus, it is with great, <clears throat> excuse me, pleasure and pride that I introduce two of the outstanding members of those respective teams as our newest All-Americans. First, Stephanie Kovacs, a senior hospitality and tourism major with a 3.8 GPA from Allentown, Pennsylvania, who earned All-American all recognition from the American Volleyball Coaches Association for the second time in her career, having also achieved that honor in 2015. This was Stephanie's third postseason honor of the year as she was also chosen AVCA All New York Region and New Jersey Athletic Conference first team. Stephanie topped Stockton in kills, points, and hitting percentage this season and finished her career with well over 1,000 kills. If anybody knows the sport of volleyball, that's where you, where you put the ball away. So. It's a tough, tough sounding term, but um, anyway, Stephanie also ended up second in the NJAC in kills and third in hitting percentage, and she ranks 25th in the NCAA Division III in total kills. Stephanie will graduate this semester in the top 15% of her class and is a member of several honor societies, a Micron Delta Kappa, the National Leadership Honor Society, Delta Mu Delta, the International Honor Society of Business, and Ada Sigma Delta, the International Hospitality Management Honor Society. She also worked the past three years with our campus police, and she volunteers in Atlantic City with Alley Cat Allies. And to top it off, Stephanie is applying to Officer Candidate School for the U.S. Coast Guard. Stephanie's coach, Allison Walker, is unable to be here, but asked me to convey her pride and congratulations to Stephanie as well. So All-American Stephanie Kovacs. American honoree is Alicia Belko. She's a physical therapy major with a 3.87 GPA from Hainesport. Alicia became Stockton's first ever All-American in cross country, finishing 27th overall at the NCAA championships out of a field of nearly 300 elite runners from across the country. And that was after being knocked down and receiving a black eye early on in the race. <laughs> Alicia was twice NCAA All-Region, this year registering the best ever finished by a Stockton runner, oh. male or female, taking third overall at the regional. She was the NJAC Rookie of the Year last year, helping the women's team win their first ever New Jersey Athletic Conference Cross Country Championship, and is a two-time first team all NJAC selection. All this in only two years of running as Alicia played field hockey her first two <laughs> fall seasons at, the, at Stockton. Alicia was also an All-American in outdoor track last year. She played sixth in the steeplechase at the NCAA Championships. She is a five-time New Jersey Athletic Conference track champion and in the 10 seasons that she competed in cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track, Alicia placed third or higher in every single of individual event at every NJAC championship that she competed in. Uh, you, have to, you have to register that as an athlete, but again, across all four years and in, in every competition she was in in a championship, she finished third or higher, which is just incredible. Lastly, Alicia was a co-sida academic All-American in 2017, was a two-time U.S. track coaches All-Academic selection in 2016 and 17, and a four-time NJAC All-Academic Team member. 
First year head women's cross country coach Joe Dare is unable to be here, but he sends his congratulations to Alicia. But uh, accompanying Alicia today is coach Jason Resch, who is our coordinator of cross country and track and field, as well as the head men's cross country and track and field coach, Jason in the back there. And again, our second All-American, Alicia Belko. Congratulations once again. And that concludes my report. Thank you so much. So next up we have committee reports, starting with Academic Affairs and Planning Committee report. We met this moment, morning and Trustee Dolce is the chair. Yes, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Dr. Vermeulen. And we uh, just, as she gets herself ready, I just wanted to congratulate the faculty and staff for the Activity Program Development for Atlantic City. I think uh, Laurie will report some very favorable results. So thank you for all the hard work you did in putting that together, that program together. So. Great, thank you. Good afternoon, Chairwoman Dininger, members of the board, President Kesselman and colleagues. We had a very informative meeting this morning. On behalf of the Academic Affairs and Planning Committee, I have one resolution today for the board to act upon. The board members in attendance unanimously approved the resolution. I will then conclude with three informational items. This resolution uh, endorses the implementation of a Master's of Arts in Counseling. I want to commend the psychology faculty for their hard work in developing this program. We're excited to offer it at Stockton. Um, it would be offered at the site in Hamilton. And so, Chairwoman Dininger, I submit to you this resolution for board action. Happy to answer any questions about the proposal. Do I have a motion? Second. And any questions, comments, discussion? Roll call. Trustee Dininger. Yes. Trustee Ciccone. Yes. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Dolce. Yes. Trustee Ellis. Yes. Trustee Jacobson. Yes. Trustee Valentine. Yes. Trustee Worthington. Yes. Trustee Ajikame. I have several informational items. First, we uh, discussed the sabbatical recommendations. Uh, the committee unanimously voted to accept the Research and Professional Development Committee's recommendations for sabbaticals. The committee received 13 proposals, and eight proposals were funded. Secondly, we recognize um, a supplemental funding for our Math and Science Partnership Grant to the School of Education including the SRI and ETTC, submitted a proposal to the New Jersey Department of Education for supplemental funds to support additional activities related to uh, teacher training in math and science, and we were happy to accept that extension. Finally, we looked at the Office of Ex Research and Sponsored Programs compilation of externally funded projects um, and recognized those uh, excellence in those projects. And finally, as our trustees said, we had a robust discussion about program planning. We talked about new programs that are in the pipeline, um, including new programs in coastal zone management, as well as the Masters of Fine Arts and Dance. In addition, we are proud to report that as of today, we have triple digits of courses in Atlantic City, over 100 courses, and this is just the first phase of planning courses for next fall. Uh, we're excited to see that most of these courses are proposed to be taught by our full-time faculty, so we thank them for their contributions. And this ends my report. Thank you so much. It was um, when I came into Atlantic City, well, when I came into this area on uh, Sunday, I drove over Albany Bridge and came up to that stoplight. And um, I, it's not polite to tell you what I was thinking in my mind when I saw these beautiful buildings uh, in front of me. And then last night, um, I went by there again, and this time I got to look at it, and I thought, wow, and over 100 courses already that are gonna be there, so it's very exciting. Uh, Student Affairs Committee report, Trustee Worthington. Uh, yes, Trustee Valentin and I uh, met and uh, wanted to, there are a couple of things going on. One, we have new personnel changes, which our president will report uh, later today, tonight. And uh, I'd like to um, ask John to come up and, and speak about our um, 
recruitment. I know that it's probably not as exciting as the last meeting that we had where we had such a big uh, increase in our, uh, in our students. But I uh, also wanted to have um, uh, Dean Santana, if he's here, speak about the um, Trustee Fellowship Distinguished Students Award. Thank you, Trustee Worthington, uh, board members, um, community. Uh, very quickly, uh, as we looked at our recruitment numbers, whether it's for the spring of 2018 or for the fall of 2018, the key word here is strength. We we're looking very, very good all the way around. Uh, as many of you know, in the spring, we are dominated by transfer. We have very few freshmen coming in at mid-year. And when we look at those numbers, we're right on track with what we're looking uh, to accomplish for the spring of 18. One area of particular strength as you look ahead to the fall of 2018 is what's happening on the freshman side. Uh, for most people in this room, as you recall, uh, we are coming off an unprecedented uh, increase last year. The fall of 2017 brought us a 32% increase. Um, and as we talk to leading national consultants around the country, that is about as unique as you can get. And we're coming off of that with early numbers that are showing extraordinary strength as well. I don't have them right in front of me right now, uh, but I can tell you that as far as applicants completed and applicants who've received an acceptance, we are ahead by 20 to 21 percent over last year's 32 percent increase. So strength on top of strength. So we're very, very excited about what's uh, moving ahead for us um, in the recruitment side of this. So uh, any questions? Just um, the graduate, you speak to the graduate programs and also what you're seeing in the open houses that you're having around the area? I, I can address both. The, the, the strength that we're talking about on the undergraduate level, we're also seeing on the grad level. Uh, as I've talked to uh, Mayor, uh, Amy Beth Glass, Dr. Glass, about her numbers, Similar types of strengths, uh, and of course, the, uh, the emergence of the new programs have really helped to bolster our, our grad numbers. And as far as open house is concerned, which is something that we do very well uh, at this uh, institution, we had our last one of the fall this, uh, this past uh, Sunday, uh, and it was uh, an excellent uh, event. Uh, spoken like a true enrollment manager, I would have liked to have had about 80 to 100 more students there. <laughs> but the ones that were there were great, they were enthusiastic, we had a, a great interaction with uh, those students and their parents. So it has been a very successful knock on wood, it's been a very successful start to our recruitment campaign for the fall of uh, 2018. And uh, Trustee uh, Worthington, is there anything? that? Okay, thank you. I, I have one comment to make. One of the things we were, everyone was concerned about, at least thinking about, when it came to that, that large of a first time, full time freshman class, what would be the implications on retention? I am pleased to announce, now it's still based upon pre-registration data and, and not final data in the spring term, but when we compare the fall, <clears throat> this fall 2017, first time, full time freshman class, it has the highest retention rate in the history of the university going into the spring, okay, 2018 semester in the history, even though it's larger, I think it's 96% retention and the same data holds true for housing. It's the highest retention rate of students in housing, many of which are obviously first time freshmen. So at least from an initial point of view, it's not over until it's over, but from an initial point of view, um, we're very comfortable with those data. And I wanted to make sure uh, the public knew about that because it was, you know, we were, all, we were all thinking about what would be the implications, so, so far, so good. Thanks for the great work of making sure the students have classes available and the support services that the students need. Um, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairperson Danninger, uh, President Kesselman, members of the board, members of the university community. Um, uh, today I stand before you um, to present the Board of Trustees Distinguished Fellows. Uh, uh, today we have five. We've awarded 271 fellowships since uh, the commencement of this program in 1986 by the board. So um, at this point in time I will call the names. Please hold the applause until the end. And for those that are being uh, honored uh, today, please make sure that you come up afterwards, after the applauses have been given, 
and uh, to the side here and, and meet with Diane D'Amico. She's going to take a, a group photo of all the honorees. So uh, Mr. Andrew Cross, uh, the project title is Analysis of Stockton Farm Crop Health via Use of Near Infrared uh, Aerial Imagery. The project faculty advisor is uh, Dr. Ron Hutchinson, Associate Professor for Biology and Sustainability Programs. Uh, please rise and uh, keep, uh, um, remain standing. Uh, Ms. Jade Gallucci, project title, Towards Diversification, a study to understand and improve Stockton's campus for culturally and linguistically diverse students. The project faculty advisor is Amy, uh, Dr. Amy Shaw, Associate Professor for Health Sciences and Director for the Cross-Cultural Speech, Language, and Acoustics Club. Um, Ms. Flor Cruz Morillo, um, project title, Educational Opportunity Fund and College Pursuit. Project faculty advisor is uh, Anthony Descent, uh, instructor of health sciences. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Brandon Morris, project title, Cybersecurity, Education and Awareness. Advisor, uh, um, Mr. Demetrius Rubus, uh, assistant director of information system uh, and security administration. And Ms. Catherine Tarqui Tarquinio, um, the project title is also Cybersecurity Education and Awareness with advisor Demetrius Robus, Assistant Director of Information System and Security Administration. Um, at this point in time, can we give them a round of applause, please? And um, would you like for me to comment on uh, two, the two other things that I had mentioned during yes. the? Okay. Um, in terms of important things to our community, um, our, our community came together um, and uh, under the leadership of Dr. Mason and Dr. Um, Michelle McDonald, we, we put in an RFP for our EOF program for Atlantic City. We're very hopeful that we will get it for next, and we'll find out something next week. Um, and the other, the other uh, things are, we had the Change the World Youth Conference, and we had uh, featured uh, individuals that were featured in the documentary. It was very well received. I encourage those of you that haven't viewed it to view it. It's about 18 minutes, and to share it. Um, and the uh, last thing is, we have a 50th anniversary of EOF video that's being currently filmed. Uh, EOF as a program uh, statewide will be turning 50. And um, it'll be an, an opportunity for the voices of directors, faculty, staff, and students throughout the years to share information about the EOF program, the experiences, but also to uh, launch a, hopefully a campaign for the support of our students, which are, are so vital and, and so much in need. And lastly, uh, ha happy holidays to the board and um, to the community. Thank you again. So next on to the Finance and Professional Services Committee report, Trustee Ellis. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Finance and Professional Services Committee met this morning. We had a very uh, good meeting, a very robust agenda. Uh, I will review several resolutions uh, that we were proposing by consent. Um, again, if any board member would like to pull any of these resolutions out, they may request to do so, but our proposal is to do it by consent agenda. Uh, very briefly, I'll review them for you. First are some bid waivers. One is, the first is for Camp Akinikin. This is for the student orientation, Stockton orientation retreat that we do there. We've done there every year for the past several years uh, for about $42,000. It's a slight increase over last year uh, due to the increase in the number of students who participate in that program. Uh, the second is for SecureWorks. Uh, they're offering, uh, this is through the Office of Information Technology offering managed security services. I'd like to uh, add kudos to the IT team who actually uh, negotiated a better deal than we, were, than we were able to find on a national cooperative ex exchange. Uh, the third bid waiver is for Universal, excuse me, Allied Universal Security Services. Uh, they are, will provide consulting and phys uh, related services for the Atlantic City campus. Um, the 
bid waiver is not to exceed $566,000. This is because we do expect the actual number to come in below that. Uh, this is for, um, these are based on hourly rates and also uh, based on having their assistance in helping us make sure we provide a secure campus when the Atlantic City campus opens next September. They have done work at University of Pennsylvania, Temple, and Drexel, other uh, urban and campuses, and done a very good job and come highly recommended. Um, the next uh, resolution is for an increase in bid waiver contract for Hanover Research Council. This is a one-year extension of their current contract. Uh, this is so they can provide additional academic programming and consulting services for the Atlantic City campus. Um, they will help us provide a research agenda, including questions and analysis to help make sure that we have uh, optimal academic program uh, when Atlantic City opens. Um, as I said, we've, we've been using them already. They were the uh, highest ranked organization providing these services and also provided the best com competitive bid when we put, put this out for a RFQ last year. Uh, the next resolution for board review is uh, tuition rates for the pilot program for international students from Panama. If you remember, Brian Kowalski helped to spearhead this effort, and with the efforts of our president and his wife, we were, we were able to secure a, a, an agreement and a relationship um, with the, the students from Panama. This is part of our global engagement initiative. Uh, this is a pilot program. Uh, this would allow this would allow us, if approved, to offer in-state tuition rates to uh, these students. We think this program has the potential to grow dramatically as the government in Panama is requiring English to be taught as a second language throughout the country. So we think this has great potential going forward. The next resolution for board consideration is housing exchange program with the university, European University in Cyprus. Uh, this resolution, if approved, would allow for one student to come as an intern from Cyprus to Stockton uh, for, uh, house, with housing at no charge. In return, one student from Stockton would be going to the European University in Cyprus with the same, uh, with the same benefit. Uh, the next resolution for board review is the uh, 2018 summer session uh, tuition. Uh, what we were proposing, what this resolution proposes is that if a student uh, enrolls in at least one course at an instructional site, uh, they would then have the opportunity to add on four additional four credit courses um, at a discounted rate. For example, for one credit course, it would cost uh, $1,639. A two credit course, two to three credit courses would cost additional $1,639. Uh, we think this will help to promote uh, enrollment in the summer, especially with the opening of the uh, Atlantic City campus. The next resolution for board consideration is a, is a authorization to uh, have a merit pool for managerial uh, employees. <coughs> uh, the resolution would ask for a 3% pool um, that would be based on performance, equity, and or reclassification of duties. Uh, recommended by a divisional cabinet member to the president and then implemented, implemented at a date to be determined by the president. Uh, the next resolution for board review is to uh, allow Stockton to become part of the Hunterdon County Educational Services Commission Cooperative. Um, this is similar to one that the board approved for Middlesex County. This again is another opportunity for us to get the best price for goods and services um, it, it, and would just add another tool uh, to be able to do that. Um, the next bid waiver, or excuse me, next resolution for consideration is a bid waiver increase um, in the amount of $125,000 with Comcast Cable. Um, this would al this <clears throat> resolution, if approved, would allow us to start the process of providing connectivity to the Atlantic City campus. It would also include Carnegie. Uh, in, that, in that contract, which would allow us to save approximately $1,400 a month on that service uh, at Carnegie now. Uh, the next resolution for board review is the uh, annual state budget request that we, uh, is required for us to submit to the state each year. 
Uh, I would encourage anyone who has not had the opportunity to read the report to take a look at it. It makes a very, very compelling story for Stockton. Um, it would ask for what the budget request asks for is a total of 40, a little over 40 million in, in appropriations. In addition to the 18, a little over 18 million we get now, we were asking for approximately 9.6 million plus addition, 117 additional funded lines here at the Gallery campus, as well as about 12 million in direct appropriation for Atlantic City, as well as 122 additional funded lines there as well. Again, I would encourage everyone, if they haven't had the chance to do it, to read the report. It really does make a very good case, and I think we'll build a foundation for our advocacy going forward. Uh, the next resolution for board review, um, we're getting near the end, guys, uh, is for housing rents uh, for 2000, fiscal 2019. Uh, the board may be wondering why we're looking at this. They may have said, didn't we just do this? And that's true, we did just do it. However, it is a conscious decision to try to get out in front uh, and, make, and get housing rates approved so that it helps us in terms of planning for the year. It helps us in terms of in the recruitment process as well. and gives some certainty for students as to what they will be paying for housing. Uh, the chart is listed in the resolution. You will notice that it is not an across-the-board increase. Um, they, there was a lot of study done with respect to the rates recommended based on demand, um, <coughs> excuse me, based on demand uh, by the students. Um, the next uh, resolution, which is kind of exciting because it may be the first resolution that really brings, re brings it home that Atlantic City is going to open, and that is the housing rents for Atlantic City campus for fiscal 19. Um, they are listed in your, in your chart. Uh, I will note that there are two sets of rates. One is a per semester rate, and also there is a rate for an annual. Uh, so we are, in, we are pricing it in such a way to encourage students to consider uh, renting housing in the Atlantic City campus for the full year. Um, I will also note that these rates, because there are kitchens in all of the units, um, there is some thinking that meal plan, they won't have to take the meal plan, which will be a benefit to students as well. Um, the last resolution for consideration by the board is, uh, as part of our duties, is to appoint board members for the um, Stockton Aviation Research and Technology Park. Um, so this resolution would confirm another three-year uh, nomination for Meg Worthing, Trustee Meg Worthington, as well as one-year um, nominations for student trustees Ted Anua Jr. and Monica O'Kane. And if either one of those students are here or both, could they stand to be? Ted, please. So Ted would. And of course, my colleague to my right, Meg Worthington, who will also be part of that August group. Um, that completes the resolutions for board review. Again, uh, we were recommending they be, be part of a consent agenda. Thank you so much. Wow, masterfully done. And uh, when you think of all the work that has gone into this, and as smoothly as you explained it all, it's um, quite amazing. So do I hear a motion? To so move? moved, and Trustee Ellis has done a lot of heavy lifting on this yeah. board in this particular committee. I'd uh, like to move the resolution. Thank you. And we have a second. Second. And Trustee Deininger? Yes. Trustee Ciccone? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Dolce? Yes. Trustee Ellis? Yes. Trustee Jacobson? Yes. Trustee Valentin? Yes. Trustee Worthington? Yes. Trustee Ajikame? Yes. Uh, there were several information items that are in, in the packet, but one uh, I would like to call on Brian Kowalski to come up and make a uh, presentation on the performance of the Stockton Affiliated Services. Good evening, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and colleagues in the audience. Um, in addition to my duties, other duties at the university, I also serve as vice president of the Stockton Affiliated Services, Inc., which is a nonprofit corporation that was formed in order to provide non-academic services for the university. Um, each year at this time, uh, the Stockton, uh, the abbreviated name is SASE. Uh, SASE provides a presentation to the board and I was asked to prevent that, present that presentation to you uh, this evening. 
the uh, SASE is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year, and uh, over time, the scope of services that it provides to the university has expanded. The principal services are bookstore services, food services, graduate housing, transportation services, mailroom postal services, uh, management of the uh, Woodbine instructional site, and uh, vending services uh, as well. Uh, going through a couple of important points in each of these areas. Um, in terms of food services, uh, SASE provides uh, 18 different dining options on campus. And uh, in the last fiscal year, approximately uh, 944,000, rounded up to a million meals that generated over uh, $10 million in gross revenues. Uh, also in the last year, SASE's improved the meal program, and that was done uh, through a collaborative effort among SASE, Chartwell's uh, input from students in residential life to uh, simplify matters. Uh, in addition, uh, SASE remodeled the Osprey Food Court, added three new food outlets to uh, provide more diverse and healthy food options. And if you've seen them, they've installed uh, many 26 LCD monitors all throughout the, uh, uh, the, the Osprey Court uh, Food Court. And uh, importantly, they've increased uh, their net profit by $321,000 uh, through managing schedules and operating costs. Another important uh, component of their services is transportation services. SASE operates 10 shuttle buses, including three new buses that were purchased in 2017. Again, getting to numbers uh, that uh, last fiscal year, 306,000 rides on in campus and off campus. <laughs> And we track the mileage, uh, believe it or not, and it's 162,000 miles that the shuttle buses have traveled, which is translated into uh, 6.5 trips around the world or 27 and a half round trips to Atlantic City. So if we're late at a pickup, we're traveling a lot of miles. Please excuse us. We also tra uh, launched a new uh, shuttle tracking application for your smartphones. A picture of it's up in the upper right-hand corner. I'm sure students have seen it. If, if you haven't seen it, it really is a pretty clever uh, little app that has real-time locations of the shuttle buses as they travel around campus out to uh, Chris Gallup and also uh, out to uh, the Seaview. So uh, again, trying to, to uh, uh, be uh, sensitive to customer service. We've also implemented a marking partnership with the Atlantic City Jitney Association, which included the wrapping of, of uh, 16 jitneys uh, with the announcement of the arrival of the Atlantic City campus. Those jitneys circulate in Atlantic City, around Atlantic City, so they're a constant uh, advertising for the uh, university. And then in addition to that, we've uh, supplemented our on-campus uh, shuttle service with the use of jitneys uh, during peak, peak times. Other, other services we provide are, are graduate student housing services. Uh, we negotiate contracts now and completing those with Chartwells and Follett for the Atlantic City campus. We've also launched uh, the rollout of the Follett Discovery software, which is most important to faculty and students. I went on their website to take a look to make sure I was acquainted. It's, if you're, you're not acquainted with it and you're faculty or student, it's a really handy tool to be able to, as faculty, identify materials that can, you can use for your your textbooks and um, the students can go in there and, uh, and make their uh, purchases and also view the material and, and uh, uh, purchase the books at that one. So it's a one-stop shopping and, and again, to try to make it easy and convenient for students. And then it, finally, the vending and beverage sales uh, increased uh, in the last fiscal year by 3.8%. Uh, reflected here is a statement of activities that is pulled from our uh, annual audit that was prepared by Grant Thornton and it's a comparison of fiscal year 17 against uh, fiscal year 16. And uh, the uh, bottom line is that we've had a change in net assets uh, uh, close to $300,000 um, in the last fiscal year. And uh, next, uh, in, in, in part of our service, we uh, provide financial store support to Stockton University to, in addition to the services we provide in, in, in financial support. And these are examples of the uh, financial support items that uh, we've supported in the last fiscal year. Uh, so I guess in closing, just uh, I wanted to um, uh, state that SASE strives to provide outstanding service to the university, and in doing so gets a lot of help from members of the university community. But uh, SASE also relies upon the support of Chartwell's staff and Follett staff and, and other vendors who uh, are, are available to provide services. 
Uh, and then finally, I want to thank the, the administrative team at uh, SASE. There's a lot of them that are around in the N-Wing and in uh, uh, the, the uh, mail room and, and at the different sites and so forth that provide support. And uh, they're led by Jim Rotler, the director of SASE. So thank them for their support. And then finally, I just want to give a shout out to Jeff uh, Pettifor, who uh, is a guy that uh, is always available at the last minute to help out with some, uh, some items. So thank you. Any questions? I'm happy to answer them. Nicely done. That's great. Next time I have to go to San Francisco, I'll, um, I'll try that app. <laughs> and I can take the shuttle. I can take the shuttle. Yeah, we could have a, a bus trip. A, 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 yeah, a jitney. Um, you know, I want to mention something. It, here we are approving rates for the Atlantic City campus housing. And when I came into the campus center today, there's a big banner. And downstairs, my understanding is that um, Haley Baum has set up a model room for, um, I hope I have this right, a model room Correct. for the Atlantic City yes. campus, which I'm very excited to see, but I think I have, um, I follow some Stockton folk on Instagram and I have seen some really wonderful pictures of it. So I do wanna see it in person as well. Uh, also on a more serious note, I wanna thank Trustee Worthington and the two student reps who are on the SARTP board. We really appreciate your time and your energy um, doing that. So thank you, thank you both. All right, next committee report, audit committee, yes. Trustee Chacon. Great, thank you very much, and I'll be brief because <coughs> we've had enough. Um, <laughs> Long day. But, but I have I the bigger I numbers could. than everyone. <laughs> the, the, uh, as you know, we have two types of distinct audits. One audit is an audit of the financial statements of the college. And just so you know, those financial statements are a culmination of every single check written out of this university, every dollar that comes in, every financial aid, every tuition bill, think about that. All that is summarized into things like a general ledger, journals, and then ultimately the financial statements. And the international firm, CPA firm of Grant Thornton comes in here for quite a while to audit through those. And I'm happy to report that once again, we have an unqualified opinion, which is as good as you could get. Okay, that means that the financial statements are correct in all material respects, and that's quite an achievement by our finance department that's and Michael correct. Angulo. Thank you very much. <laughs> Number two, we have a hybrid internal audit department here at the college. We have an internal auditor, and we also use the international CPA firm of Baker Tilly. And that internal audit focuses on operations within the college. So for this past year, they got through with auditing risk management, enrollment management, ADA compliance they're actually working on now. Then they're gonna to get to emergency and crisis management and planning. All those audits are for management use it's to increase the efficiency, look at how they're performing, make suggestions, how to improve things within the college, and it's actually working out very, very well. We're very pleased with it, and we have no major findings in that area. With that, I conclude my report. Thank you. Nice report, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. really important. That's worth a clap. <laughs> Buildings and Grounds Committee report. Trustee Schofer was unable to be here today, but Trustee Chacon is gonna take over. <laughs> Thank you. Let me fill in for my fellow trustee, Leo Schofer, and do what Mr. Schofer does, and that's call Don Hudson, our vice president. <laughs> <laughs> and he has the best show of anyone, trust mm -hmm. me. You, you, you have something stuck to your pants. Does it say who No, Don does. Let him make for it. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was the reserve sign. The reserve sign. He's reserved. He's ours. He is it did ours. Not you say, are ours. You are it did not say and you are ours. <laughs> no, it's worse. It said reserved. Yeah, you are. Um, good evening. Uh, this, this photo was taken by Brian Kowalski on his world trip in the shuttle. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, we took a good solid hour this morning on our building and grounds meeting. Uh, the team may not even know, but we covered almost 50 projects today 
in that hour. And uh, this is the super reduced version of it. We always start with Atlantic City. Uh, it's going well. Uh, here's a great aerial shot that's taken from a plane of a, a new program assistant we have in our department. Her father owns a plane, so we made use of the, the shot. It's great. Uh, the project is on schedule, and I'm happy to say we are maintaining the budget as we originally expected, and uh, we're looking to start moving, uh, moving people and, and furniture this summer. So that being said... So of course that is the parking garage, seven stories of parking and seven stories of the South Jersey gas upon it. And to the left is the residential building. We really like that parking garage. <laughs> View from a standard dorm room. This is a view looking down the hallway to the follet. This is the garden plaza area and the beach. Now enjoy this technique in videography. The academic building. lobby of the academic building and the stair tower. This is the pre-function space to the Fannie Lou Hamer Center, the den room. Second story student lounge area. The event room. And that is your campus as of about a week and a half ago. That is Atlantic City. Uh, however, we're back here on Galloway campus. As you know, we're always under construction, and we moved right from the summer into the fall, and we're hitting all around the perimeter. Of, as you've, if you've been driving on campus, you'll see it. Uh, the first project I like to always bring up to date is the quad. Uh, again, that project uh, is just about wrapping up. Uh, we expect furniture, the first wave of furniture moving into the second floor of the Health Sciences Center next week. And everything will start flowing right after that. Uh, and it's going to take a, about a month or so, and we'll be wrapping up the uh, temporary certificate of occupancy in about, a, about two weeks after uh, the furniture starts moving in. And there's a shot that's duplicate in the bottom corner is the image we had been sharing for the last two years, and there's the reality. Oh, there's a video. Physics lab. I'll say chemistry. This is the hallway that leads back to the USC one from the lobby. And of course, there's the quad. Sciences Center, and this is the hallway that overlooks the quad for the first level. That's upstairs somewhere. 
<laughs> That's the lobby in the stair tower. And this, these images are about a week and a half old, and they're already old. There's paving, there's sidewalks. The signage in front of the quad should be uh, coming in the next week or so. Um, special thanks to my team, Darnley Biddle and Mark Ciccatelli, who always produce uh, these videos, and we challenge them every, every period of try to be more creative than you were before. So success again. Thank you. And then just a couple more updates. These are things you already know are happening. Uh, the bottom left-hand corner is what we call the monument sign, and then the directional signs above. And if you've driven around campus, you'll see that uh, the monument signs are in progress. Stay with us. There's lots of little details uh, that are being uh, done on these. And here's one now. <laughs> he, he won't stay there. <laughs> but... <laughs> That is a stainless steel um, emblem, of course, it's the, the, the diagram or the, uh, the graphic the lot logo that we've been using, and we're kind of maintaining it. It's the brand, and we've been working with Jeff's office now for a couple years, and across the board, branding the university everywhere it comes up. And then in the middle of the, uh, right in that area here, is something special, and Skip has the, what's going to be displayed in that is a stainless steel emblem uh, blue, it goes right here, and it will stand right above the letters. You're going to see all of this come into place in the next week and a half, right before you leave for the holidays. Uh, so I hope you really enjoy that. Thank you. Nice work. Yeah. Uh, nice work again. <laughs> and then the other piece of this puzzle, which we were really, really pleased with, is the uh, uh, the monument or the directional signs are on campus. Um, I want to thank uh, John Icavelli for the dollar he gave me because he bet me I couldn't get admissions on the sign. <laughs> so I got a fresh dollar bill today. Uh, and when you leave campus, I can tell you that they, they, I think they did the final signs this week are electric. If you haven't been here at night, wait till you go out. Please use Vera King Ferris. They're all lit up and you can see them in a nice long distance. And it now brands the campus along the main road. So very, very happy with that. Another uh, new thing that we've been doing on the side, you guys know and we probably didn't realize it, it is just about done. Manahawken, expansion of Manahawken, adding about 8,000 square feet to our existing facility, just down a couple units uh, for our health sciences program and we're working with academics. Uh, the space is just about done, furniture around New Year's, and it will be open for business in, during when the starter class is in January. And here's a quick image of how the finishes are coming out. Mm -hmm. Very professional, very high, you know, what a health sciences center should look like in Manahawken. And, uh, oh, one more project, oh, sorry. So we talked about the club flags and organiz organizational flags this past year. Um, this is, was the concept study that we did all of last summer and we're presenting. And if you've driven past, we just finished this about a week ago. Um, it's ready for business, turning it over to student affairs to uh, coordinate with all the clubs. Currently, it's just it's putting up our just Stockton flags, but it really is really coming together, and we really went flag crazy. So it looks great. All right, thank you, everybody. Thanks. Nice job. Buddy. So next development committee report, Trustee Jacobson. Call on Dr. Elmer, please. Good evening, President Kesselman, Chair Dininger, members of the board, campus community colleagues. Uh, pleased to give you a few updates. The foundation uh, audit firm uh, has, has, like the university, completed its uh, fiscal 17 audit uh, with a, I always get my, my terms wrong, Ray, an unqualified report's a good thing. Um, so uh, the, the, the audit report for the foundation is clean uh, and all is in good shape. And uh, my thanks to uh, our good folks in uh, finance and accounting and our gift processing folks in the development office um, for their good work in keeping all of that straight. Foundation net assets as of September 30 stand at uh, 36.9 million compared to 33.3 million at the same time last year. So we continue to see uh, good things there. 
fiscal year giving through the end of November just last week was uh, just shy of a million dollars. So since everybody's rounding up, um, I'll uh, feel free to do the same um, and claim that $14,000 and round up to a million. It's 14% more than last year, factoring out some of the large uh, gifts, including the Noise Museum gift and three additional one-time six-figure gifts, 27% um, up the year before that. So we, we feel good about where we are. When um, I, I reported to you in September, uh, I reported we'd begun to process a wonderful gift from the Noise Foundation of property and invested securities, totaling approximately $2.2 million. Um, that gift is days away from being complete and finalized. All is in, in, in work there. Um, and so we're pleased for that. Um, and uh, thanks to our real estate folks, we're also working on three additional gifts of property to the institution that will close in December, and we're looking for a very strong uh, year end. So that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Great. Thank you. Thank you. We have the Investment Committee report, Trustee Ellis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the Investment Committee met on November, November 9th. Uh, with our investment advisors, Wells Fargo and uh, Ashford. Uh, we had a good, good meeting. Uh, they both gave an update on how their performance. I'm pleased to report that in both cases, um, they are performing over, they are performing year to date over 8%, which is well above our CPI plus 2.5% benchmark. Uh, this year, that comes in at roughly 3.5%. That's through October. Um, hopefully, they continue strong through the end of the year, and we have a nice finish to the year. But. Uh, uh, all in all, uh, the fund is doing quite well. Great. Thank you so much. Review of new university policy. Dr. Kesselman. Yes, this is informational because it's the first reading. As many of you know, we are going through the university's policies and procedures to ensure that we're in compliance with current law. One of the areas that we wanted to update was our whistleblower policy. It appears in there. The board will use this as the first reading. It will come back at our next board meeting for approval. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Kesselman, our next resolution, personnel actions, do you yeah, have? Yes, um, is there a motion to approve the personnel action resolution, item number eight? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll. Okay, Trustee Paul. Dininger. Yes. Trustee Ciccone. Yes. Trustee Davis. Yes. Trustee Dolce. Yes. Trustee Ellis. Yes. Trustee Jacobson. Yes. Trustee Valentin. Yes. Trustee Worthington. Yes. I'd like to have a couple comments right now before the public on, on this particular personnel resolution uh, because there's a few people I want to acknowledge today. Um, let's, let's first begin with um, Nancy Messina, who is retiring. For those who do not know, Nancy Messina has an, I'm seeing a will that just, her mouth just dropped open. If you want to talk about a rock of stability for the history of arts and humanities, the leader of the assistant deans, someone who probably knows the faculty as well as anyone, the history of the university. She knows everything about advising, orientation, she has institutional memory, uh, and she has demonstrated a commitment to Stockton uh, and to Stockton students and faculty, second to none. Nancy, enjoy your well-earned retirement. You will be sorely missed. Second individual, she um, she's been at Stockton for a little less than 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 the amount of years that Nancy has, but she's had a heck of an impact in the 10 years that she's been here. She's the executive director of the Hughes Center and was special advisor to the presidents. Under her tutelage and guidance, the center came from infancy into a mature center that is the envy of any center of its kind in New Jersey. She created during her time here the Legislator in Residence program. Uh, she brought to the campus extraordinary speakers, including, as you just realized, uh, Vice President Joe Biden just a couple weeks ago, uh, established the Polling Institute, which has uh, done a phenomenal job for the institution. Uh, she served on the cabinet for ver almost her, her entire career here and raised more than $2 million in funds uh, during this time period. Sharon Schulman is also retiring, the executive director of the youth.
There's a fellow in the back who everyone knows is already retiring, and it was on a different trustee um, resolution, but I would be remiss uh, if I did not shout out my colleague and friend uh, for almost my entire administrative, at least senior level administrative career, the person that uh, really is one of the primary architects in the building of student affairs at this institution. He brought that division uh, from infancy to a, a level that has yielded extraordinary results. He's going to be a uh, professor emeritus. Um, I know of no one else who's given as much as Joe Marchetti. Joe, to, for all your way down. And finally, these individuals are, are not here today. Both have legitimate reasons why they're not, and we're really anxious to be here. But I do want to announce for the public that the new interim director of the Hughes Center will be Dr. Michael Klein. Many of you know who he is. Um, he comes from as the executive directorship of the New Jersey Association of State Colleges and Universities. He has his uh, baccalaureate degree, cum laude, out of Princeton. Uh, his master's degree was from, uh, oh, master, he's got a law degree from Boston College, and his PhD is from New York University. He worked for Governor uh, uh, Christy Whitman in her administration and the primary architect of the uh, autonomy laws of, as it pertains to Stockton. Uh, he will be a strong addition to our program. So Mike will be with us in early January. And as most of you know, and many of you have participated in a nationwide search, which yielded among the most, you know, uh, substantially impressive group of candidates for the position of Vice President for Student Affairs, and we have hired, as I announced this last week, Dr. Chris Ketching, who will be here in early February, and I think will be a great addition to build upon all the greatness that preceded him. As everyone knows, Tomasa has retired also, and this will, again, add the kind of stability that we need as we move on into the future. So I did want to bring that to everyone's attention. You'll meet Chris and Michael at the next uh, board meeting. All right, thank you. Other business? Comments from the Board of Trustees? Comments from the public? Dr. Vermeulen? It's my pleasure to recognize those faculty who have been recommended for promotion and or tenure. So please stand and be acknowledged and congratulated for your uh, fine accomplishments. We're all very proud of you. Dr. Neil Aronson, Professor of Physics. <laughs> Ms. Carrie Chang Fitzgibbon, uh, Associate Professor in the Library. <laughs> Dr. Kimberly Lieback, Professor of Education. Dr. Laura Zaccone, Professor of History. Dr. Meg White, Tenured Associate Professor of Education. Dr. Elizabeth Erbaugh, Tenured Assistant Professor of Sociology. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Any other comments from the public? Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, very quickly, I'd like to acknowledge three uh, individuals who are um, on the personnel uh, resolution this evening um, from administration and finance. We have Kevin Broker, who is in fiscal affairs. Kevin, if you want to stand briefly. Um, <laughs> Sean Laidlaw, who is joining, who has joined procurement office. And then Regina Ros Rosanello, who is in disbursements. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As a follow-up uh, to Michael's comments uh, from the per personnel resolution, I'd also like to just recognize uh, Mr. Pete Gallagher, uh, who has uh, been reclassified. <laughs> So Pete will serve in the role as Assistant Director of Health Desk Operations. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. We do have um, 
uh, promotion from Student Affairs. Uh, well, um, Mr. Tom Itas, please rise and be recognized. All right. Um, <laughs> Associate Director. And there were a few other uh, reclassifications for our uh, counselors in the counseling center. Are, are our counselors here? Please, uh, please stand and be recognized. Uh, Karen Matzinger from our counseling center. Nathan Morrell from our counseling center. And um, thank you again. She's back. Um, I'm actually the, uh, Ann Palmer, the Vice President of the Stockton Federation of Teachers. I'm here because Roger Jackson can't be. First of all, congratulations to my colleagues who have been tenured and promoted again. Um, I want to congratulate admissions on the uh, increase in enrollment, but I would be remiss if I didn't point out the pressure that that increase has placed upon faculty and the fact that the retention rate of those students is highly dependent on the extraordinary efforts of the faculty who have bore uh, the, the uh, immense increase in enrollment and staff members. So I hope we thank the faculty, especially the faculty in the first program, in the writing programs and math for the, for the students who need uh, the work at the beginning of their careers. Um, so if we would please have a hand for the faculty, I think that's necessary. We, we gotta be their voice. Nancy will never be forgiven, so I'll just <laughs> leave it at that, thanks. <laughs> also, kudos to, there are a number of, uh, Anne being one, who, uh, a number of faculty members who have earned sabbaticals for next year, and they all also should be commended for their work, and you being one, and there's a, a group of them in there. Okay, but regarding that retention rate, I'm, I'm sure there are many um, parents, families, students. Well, I know as a parent of a freshman, when he told me he signed up for courses for next semester, I was like, yes, that's wonderful, <laughs> I'm so excited. So, anyway, any other comments? Oh, Dean Honaker. Yes. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that the Messiah oh, is being yeah. oh, performed yes. at the Borgata this Sunday yes. at 7 p.m. And if you've never heard the Messiah sung live and you've never seen okay. Beverly Vaughn direct it, <laughs> yeah. you should go. Tickets are reasonably priced, I believe at $12. And uh, we're having it in the event room. So please, it's a glorious experience. And Beverly wears the most amazing dress. Oh, yes. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Lise. All right, the next scheduling, regular scheduled meeting of the board will be held at 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday, February 21st, 2018, right here. And thank you so much. Have Can we have a, a motion have to adjourn? Please? Oh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Do I hear a second? A, do I hear a motion, a second? All in second. favor? Yes. <laughs> Aye. Have a wonderful uh, holiday season. See you all. Everybody, thank every, you. Next thank week you so we much. Next institutional holiday party next Friday. Is it Friday? Help me, it was Friday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>